Hey guys, it's been a little while, but we're back to look at some PlayStation demo disc games. And uh, this is actually the very first demo disc that I ever played. Um, I never owned it until recently, but um, yeah, it's actually got a fair few memories, even though there's actually not very many game demos on here. I think there's only about three. So uh, not too many videos, but the one I want to start off with is Klonoa 2. Uh, okay, there is actually WWF Smackdown as well, so there you go. But uh, Quinoa 2 is a game that I have never actually played before this demo disc. I only played it uh, for the first time a few months ago. And uh, I really enjoyed it. So I figured uh, it was a good one to show off. And here is Quinoa. So we actually have a bit of a cell shaded aesthetic going on. This is uh, very early in the PS2's life, uh, lifespan. You can see that there is uh, you know, year 2000 down there. So we got... We've basically got two levels here. We've got the Sea of Tears and Jungle Slider. So we're going to start off with the Sea of Tears, which is the more traditional level in the game. I would really actually love to track this game down, but unfortunately it's a fairly expensive for a PS2 game. But uh, I am actually going to skip the story sequence. Um, it goes on for a while, and the voice acting is a little bit painful. <laughs> Not necessarily bad, but just, uh, you know, that really sort of annoying voice type. But uh, yeah, so apologies to anyone who to say it, but I really just want to talk about the gameplay. So we are playing of course a 2D side-scroller using uh, 3D graphics of course, so it's more 2.5D I suppose. So uh, of course we collect these little things here, and uh, we can use square to grab onto enemies. And uh, what we can actually do is use enemies to kind of give ourselves a double jump. So, uh, bear with me, I'm going to actually have to try and remember all this uh, from a few months ago, but I'm pretty sure I've got the hang of most of them. So, the, the game basically revolves around grabbing objects, and uh, I'm not sure what I can do here. You can actually see that I can look forward and I can look back, uh, so, you know, that comes into play a little bit later. But I'm uh, not sure exactly what I can do about egg. I'm probably forgetting things, but uh, anyway. You can see there we've got some cool stuff going on in the background, so the tree falling apart, being hit by lightning. But uh, I just used the double jump there. And what can we do here? Get a bit of a boosted jump. So yeah, not exactly sure how you get those ones up there. Um, but yeah, it, it's just a very... The game feels very good to play. Quinoa is very responsive. Um, I do recommend using the D-pad for this game. At least based on the demo anyway. I presume that that, of course, refills one of your hearts. Oh! What's the matter? Oh, okay, so he's just teaching me about uh, using enemies to jump. So that's alright. So we'll just grab this poor, sleeping, cute little red enemy. And, uh, there we go, we can actually pop the bubble and get a collectible. You can see that whenever a, a, an enemy dies, they actually do respawn, uh, so that you can you know, get back up the ledge, I guess, if you fall down. Uh, but for an OPS2 game, it looks pretty good. There's uh, certainly a lot of artistic style. Obviously, they didn't go the full way with the cell shading art style, which is a bit of a shame, I think. But still, I think the game does look good, and we're going to see a bit more of that in the stage that we do after this. So we've got these sort of things we can grab onto here. I should say that this is actually the only experience I have with uh, Quinoa. I've never played the game before. Okay, so we can take this... I, by that I mean, of course, I never played the PS1 game. Uh, I didn't play the GBA game, although I know that is out on the Wii U now. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what this is. Oh, it's a cannon. There we go. So uh, we've got alternate routes, which I always do appreciate. So whenever you grab them, they obviously inflate, and it's, uh, it's a very cute effect. I probably shouldn't have done that, actually, but... Uh, oh. So you got to pop the bubble while jumping. So obviously this must be the first level in the game. Uh, they're just kind of introducing you to all different mechanics. But as far as a platformer demo goes, it's a reasonably meaty experience. And so there we go. We're just on the other side of the bridge now. Oh, and so big enemies then you can actually use as platforms. So that's a very handy little trick. Oh, but you can't actually just jump on most normal enemies. 
Oh, there we go. We can just throw an enemy into another one to take down the big guy. So, very simple mechanics, but there seems to be a lot that you can do with it. Um, as you may have noticed, I can also do kind of a, a short little hover by holding the jump button in midair. It doesn't actually get me very far, but it does keep me airborne a little bit more. So, I'm sure that'll be helpful. Alright. Back outside into the rain. A little bit more complex stuff now. Not too bad. I think that the uh, alarm clocks must actually be checkpoints. At least that's the only thing I can think that would make sense. So of course we're trying to get closer and closer to the uh, island in the background. I always love it when 2.5D games kind of uh, do that sort of thing. They try to, uh, you know, they show you your goal in the background and you progressively move further and further in that direction. So just there we can see that the different enemies do have different attributes, so uh, because that was a flying enemy, I actually could grab onto it. There we go. And uh, this is another star. I'm not really sure what the collectibles mean in this game, but uh, I, I mean, I'm sure they're nothing that's very important for the demo. But uh, yeah, just a really solid game. I, I've really started to get an appreciation uh, in more recent years for games that aren't necessarily incredible or something completely out of the blue, but are just really fun to play and really polished experiences. And uh, based on what I'm playing here, Konoha does actually feel like that. And here we've got a totally different type of gameplay. Uh, bird manta ray riding of some sort, uh, which is interesting. But uh, just a nice little break in uh, the gameplay style, which I always do appreciate. Pretty simple though, I imagine they might reuse this concept a bit later and get a bit more complicated. So where are we headed? Okay, so I guess we've reached uh, the Green Island. Almost, uh, not quite apparently. Oh, found another egg, but I'm, I'm really still not sure what to do with these. Uh, the shoulder buttons don't really do anything. Quinoa can actually do a taunt, like that, uh, which is kind of cool, but uh, not really sure what I can do beyond that. So uh, anyway, I guess maybe I can grab an enemy and smack them in. Ah, there we go. Probably should have done that at the start of the uh, level then. Oh well. So let's see. I think I've only got one more collectible then. Ah, two more, okay. Uh, I got something here. I really do love all that sort of foreground background interplay. Just, uh, just a really cool effect. And so then we can grab onto this guy. Get back up here. I also, I really do like the mechanics of this actually. Sorry, I, I, if I see a collectible or a possible collectible, I've uh, got to go after it. So it looks like we're building some sort of cat thing. Interesting. So the glide does actually have a bit of usefulness then. It does get you just enough range to reach that out of, uh, you know, hand ledge. Okay, but see you soon, Quinoa 2 Lunar Tears Veil. So uh, that's half of the demo. Okay guys, we're back and we're going to take a look at Jungle Slider. Which is a very different type of level. I actually just uh, looked up prices for the game again and Basically, you're looking for something around the 40 to maybe $60 mark. So, uh, yeah, of course, we're at a giant slide for some reason. I'm sure there's plenty of story reasons. This does seem to be a very cutscene heavy game for a platformer. So, we've got to ride that board all the way down. Oh, I can't swim, there you go. Always a good excuse for making uh, water a hazard. Alright, I think we'll just skip past this and get on with it. So this is a more 3D sort of level. It, it changes between 2D and 3D. And I can actually hover on the board. Um, I can actually grab enemies as well. Oh. Not quite, unfortunately. The timing was a bit too precise there. I cannot grab these guys, though. They are off limits. 
So I think this is a uh, pretty interesting level type. You can see that... Uh, uh, yes, just got it! Okay, so... Uh, based on what I see in this demo, I get the impression that Konoha 2 is probably a fairly... Ah, not quite, unfortunately. Probably a fairly diverse game. It, it gives you a few different uh, types of challenges in the levels. So, uh, yeah, as I said, it's something that I would really like to get my hands on one day. But uh, as far as PS2 games go, it's reasonably pricey, so... And I, I don't imagine it would be a particularly long game either, so... Oh! Run away! Always got to do the, uh, <laughs> sort of Indiana Jones style... Behind, uh... <laughs> ah! Running away from things, camera! Oh! I am not doing too well here, am I? I will say that the control on these sections isn't quite as good as uh, the actual platforming. But uh, it's certainly not bad by any means, though. Ah, uh, not quite. Just overshot by a little bit. I'm actually, I can actually break a bit if I hold backwards or forward on the control, Or break and speed up if I hold backwards and forward on the controller. So, uh, a little bit more strategy, although I don't break too much, and we don't want to probably break too much on some of these sections. Okay, so now we're behind the back in 3D. Can I get it? Yes! Okay. So yeah, there's not a whole lot to say about Konoha 2, not having uh, a whole lot of experience with the series, but I definitely think that if you do like uh, this sort of platforming experience, uh, I, would look in I would definitely look into it. I really enjoy playing this demo. And while, of course, a demo is not always indicative of the final quality, uh, I, I would say that given the fan base that Klonoa does have, uh, it, it's a fairly cult fan base, but it is uh, certainly around. I would say that, you know, I, I wouldn't worry too much about this not being representative of the final product. I imagine that this is a fairly accurate representation. I think we're approaching the end, getting a Not really too tough, there's not really a, a difficulty increase here, but again, I imagine this is pretty early in the game. Load times are actually very good. I mean, I imagine they mask that partly with the transition, but, uh... Oh! Didn't manage to quite get the last one, unfortunately. That's a shame, I was uh, hoping to get the last one and uh, use that as the bounce pad. But, uh, unfortunately not. I'm coming for you. Okay, we'll just hold on to this guy. There we go, that's more like it. I really do like that mechanic, actually. It's it's so simple, but at the same time, it's just a really cool concept. Um, just the fact that you've got to actually use enemies, rather than finding them just as obstacles, you also have to use them uh, to help you get through the level. And there's something really satisfying about jumping off an enemy. It's actually a bit like, uh, oh, what was that N64 game? What was it called? Uh, it was a very weird one, Maniac something or other. Anyway. But uh, I, I believe the there was a mechanic in that game that was very similar. But that is it for the Klonoa 2 Lunatea's Veil demo. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll just leave you with the note that uh, you can actually see Pac-Man is on Klonoa's hat. So that's a very cool reference. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys next time.